Hi, in this problem we're going to find the volume generated by revolving the top half of this ellipse x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1 about the x-axis. So let's go ahead and work it out. Let's draw a little picture here. So here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. And in an ellipse, a is always bigger than b, so it's probably going to look something like this maybe. This is the top half an ellipse where this is a and this is negative a and this here is b and that's just the top half and we're going to rotate it uh, about the x-axis so if we draw a rectangle here we can use the disk method and this here is going to be our big r big r of x it's a function of x because it's a vertical rectangle and the volume here is given by pi integral from negative a to a of big R of x quantity squared dx. This is using what's called the disk method. Okay, so we just have to figure out uh, what big R of x is. So let's take this equation here and see if we can manipulate it in some way that will allow us to do that. So we know that we have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. So let's go ahead and solve for y squared. We can subtract this from both sides. So that gives us y squared over b squared equals 1 minus x squared over a squared. Then if we multiply both sides uh, by b squared, we end up with y squared equals b squared, parentheses, 1 minus uh, and then here we have x squared over a squared, just like that. All right, so y, if you, if you solve for y, you're going to end up taking the square root, right? But the thing is, we have r of x squared. So if I were to solve for y, I would get plus or minus the square root of b squared 1 minus x squared over a squared. And I would want the plus, right? I would want the plus because it's the top half of the ellipse. The minus would be the bottom half. Um, so it would be this one here, just like that. Okay, so that would be your y. That's going to be our r, right? That's going to be our r. But when you square it, you basically just get this again. You see, so this none of this was really necessary because this is going to be r of x squared right here. This whole thing is r of x squared. So it works out really nice. Okay, so let's come over here and work it out. So v is equal to pi times the integral from negative a to a. And it's r of x squared, so it's just this quantity here. So it'll be, um, I'm gonna distribute the b squared. So it'll be b squared minus b squared over a squared, and then x squared dx, okay? And let's just go ahead and do it. You could. You could probably do something here because um, this is an even function over a symmetric interval. So you can take a shortcut here in order to do this. You could basically, instead of integrating from negative a to a, you can go uh, from zero to a and double the result. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So doubling the result, we get two pi, zero to a. So whenever you have an even function over a symmetric interval, you can instead integrate from zero to a and double the result b squared minus b squared over a squared, x squared dx. All right, let's integrate. This is 2 pi. Uh, this is a constant, so when you integrate with respect to x, it's just going to be b squared x. Here you'll use the power rule, so minus b squared over a squared, x cubed over 3. And we're going from 0 to a. Okay, and we plug in the a first, so it'll be 2 pi b squared a minus b squared a cubed over a squared, 3a squared. And then minus, plug in the zero, it all goes away because you have x's here. All right, so this is pretty messy. Um, let's go ahead and try to uh, write it as a single uh, fraction. This will be 2 pi. Okay, 2 pi. And basically, I'm going to take this and multiply it by 3a squared over 3a squared like this. So this will be 3a squared over 3a squared times b squared a. 
minus b squared a cubed over 3a squared. Just to get a common denominator here so we can work through it. So this is equal to 2 pi. This will be 3a cubed b squared. 3a cubed b squared over 3a squared minus b squared a cubed over 3a squared. So we have three of these minus one of these, right? This is a cubed b squared, a cubed b squared. You have three a cubed b squared minus one a cubed b squared. It's gonna give us two a cubed b squared. So we have two pi, two a cubed b squared over three a squared. So that's going to be four, right? Four, two times two is four. So we're gonna get um, four pi. Okay, four pi, and then we're gonna lose uh, one of the a's, two of the a's, a b squared over three. And that should be it. You could probably write it another way. You could write it as four thirds pi a b squared. It's a little prettier that way. So either of these would work. And that would be the volume of the solid of revolution that you get when you rotate the top half of this ellipse across the x-axis. So I went through that really quickly. Um, I was just gonna work it out and I thought, let me just turn the camera on and work through it. This is from an old book. This is from a book um, by H.B. Phillips. And the book is from 1917 and it's called Integral Calculus. And H.B. Phillips was an assistant professor at MIT. So really old school. Good luck.